we already had three hours of introductory discussion on electromagnetic fields. Now let us come to discuss the subject. Whatever we speak here is extremely important because every point goes into different subjects at different levels. Please remember that we are trying to learn electromagnetics. as a fundamental subject because of which it is to be properly discussed and understood. Fundamental subject to many different subjects specified. In this subject, the first topic is electrostatics, as you know. Electrostatics as such I told it, but still I'll repeat it. Deals with the fields of Fixed amount of electric charges at rest. Whenever we say that it is statics, it is static with respect to time. When it is static with respect to time, neither the magnitude nor the position of the charge should vary with time. So the charge that we consider here as the source of the respective field should have constant magnitude and should be there at rest. This electrostatics is based on two laws to say. One is the law given based on observation that Law one, maybe it is studied like it in physics. Like charges repel, and unlike charges attract each other. Fine. This is the continuation of the discussion that we had, right? Law two is what? is the Coulomb's the so-called inverse square law. We saw that every effect at a distance is inversely proportional to square of the distance between the source and the point of observation. For this to become a topic in physics or sciences. It is not enough if you tell that they repel or attract. 
we should be in a position to give a formula to compute the amount of repulsive or attractive force experienced by a charge. And at some point, there or at a higher level, check the validity of or the correctness of this particular formula by conducting an experiment. Coulomb's inverse square law gives the force experienced by one point charge because of the other point. force experienced by a point charge because of the other point charge. A point in space is the sphere of zero radius. And it states that given two point charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance B. The force of attraction and repulsion between two point charges separated by a distance d in a vacuum or free space is directly proportional to the square of the sorry the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them normal statement that you have studied many a time if q1 and q2 are two point charges separated by a distance d if they are like charges they repel one another and if they are unlike charges they attract one another we are talking about the force acting on these two charges because we are talking about the force which is a vector quantity we should give the magnitude of the force and give the direction of it also If you say, if I apply this much of force on this subject, what happened? We will not be in a position to tell the proper answer. Only if we tell the direction in which that particular force is applied, we will be able to tell what happens because of that particular force, because of which we should be in a position to give the direction of it here, which is basically called a scalar law. We just take it in the in words. The force of attraction and repulsion between two point charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance D in error vacuum is directly proportional to their product of the product of their charges, inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, and acts along the line joining these two charges we are trying to give in this statement the line of support of the force vector definitely the line along which equal and opposite forces on these charges q1 and q2 act is a line joining these two charges so the force F is directly proportional to the product. This is the second discussion that we are having on it. Proportional to 1 by D squared. Acting along the line joining these two charges. So it is proportional to 
q1 q2 by d square and f equal to here it is taken like this no 1 by 4 pi epsilon because we have the discussion about it q1 q2 by d square For us, it is extremely important to know that with Q1 and Q2 in Coulombs, with Q1 and Q2 in Coulombs, D in meter and epsilon having the units of farad per meter, and epsilon having the units of farad per meter, very important. I, I, I think I spoke about it also, right? Somewhere it is farad per centimeter also. But we should have put it in the unit of farad per meter. This formula gives the force in Newton. One by four pi epsilon is the constant of proportionality, which is a constant for a me given medium in which these two charges, point charges are separated by a distance d. The, this epsilon quickly is equal to epsilon naught, epsilon r, we so, you know, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Absolute permittivity of free space and epsilon is the absolute permittivity of any medium always is represented as epsilon r a constant multiplied by epsilon naught. Epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the medium, if any general medium if we take, right? By definition, we will get only epsilon naught in the definition because it is stated in air or free space because it is that experiment, no Coulomb's torsion balance experiment was conducted in A. Later on, say epsilon is replaced with epsilon, epsilon naught is replaced with epsilon. By definition, proportionality constant is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, bringing other media into picture because every effect at a distance except the gravitational force of attraction only depends upon the medium present between the source and point of observation, relative permittivity. This relative permittivity is also called as dielectric constant. Epsilon r is relative permittivity of the medium for which the absolute permittivity is epsilon naught epsilon r. We call this epsilon r as dielectric constant also. I will put it like this. We need to basically know different types of bond that exist in atoms between atoms in solids. To discuss about their electrical properties. One such primary bond that we normally talk about is ionic bond. Ionic bond is a Coulombic force of attraction.
between two oppositely charged atoms. One is positive charge or cation that has lost its electrons and the other is the negative charge or anion that took the electrons. One is electronegative and another should be electropositive. The force of attraction, here it is only attraction, between these two oppositely charged ions is called as ionic bond. It is Coulombic force of attraction. We know that water is the wonderful ionic solvent. Because its dielectric constant or relative permittivity is the highest, which is equal to 80 around. When an ionically bonded molecule is put in water, the force of attraction between these two ions will become 1 by 81 times the force that exists in free space. They get dissociated because of that. Anyway, thermal energy is trying to separate them. When they are put in water, they dissociate. Water is a unique solvent because its dielectric constant or relative permittivity is highest. Okay, check it once. Next. Let us come to this. In this itself, superposition principle superposition principle if there are a number of charges at different distances from one charge or given a system of n charges each charge simultaneously experiences a force because of each charge experiences n minus 1 forces because of all the other charges definitely when so many forces are simultaneously acting on a given charge the total force experienced by the charge is computed as the superposition of the individual forces. In a system of n charges, where charge 1, q1 is placed somewhere, q2 is placed somewhere, not on paper, they could be there in space, but I can only show them like this, right? Q4, Qn, each charge experiences
n minus 1 forces simultaneously. If if i j bar vector is the force on ith charge due to jth charge total force on ith charge represented as f i bar is equal to what sigma summation f i j bar or j is equal to 1 to n j not equal to i because when we talk about the force experienced by ith charge talk about the forces due to all the other charges j is equal to 1 to n but j not equal to i that one case is to be eliminated Superposition principle. Two small things we will see to get motivated to get into it, whether we use them or not. Number one. I have a charge Q1 kept at a point. I have a charge Q2 kept another point. Here the case is that both Q1 and Q2 are similar charges in sense both are positive charges or both are negative charges given q1 and q2 separated by a distance d in some medium question is i should Find out a point where any charge kept at that point experiences no force or the force experienced by any charge kept at that point is zero. Please remember, I need to talk about the point where any such charge is to be kept. Because any point in the space given now will have the field created by Q1 as well as Q2. At any point, when a charge is kept, it experiences two forces. When an object is experiencing two forces, for sure, but the total force experienced by that particular charge is zero, immediately takes us to a point in the statement where these two forces should be equal and opposite in their directions. Now I have to identify a point where any charge experiences two forces in the opposite directions, first of all, and adjust the distance in such a way that the magnitudes of those two forces are equal because of which total force experienced is zero. Where should I keep? Because both the forces should act along a line, along the same line because they should be equal and opposite. 
I should keep the charge somewhere here. You know all these things, but I'm just talking about it. Keep some charge Q. I will consider the case where this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. Because of which it experiences F1 in this direction, F2 in this direction, because this charge small q is repelled by both. These two charges are separated by a distance b. At any point in between these two charges on the line joining them, the third charge will experience two forces in opposite directions. If the small q is, is negative, of course, because of Q1 is along F2, because of Q2 is along F1, they will be in opposite directions. Now, what I can say is what, let's suppose, X is the distance of the point from charge Q1. Then I'll say what? Q1, small q divided by 4 pi epsilon x squared. I know the magnitude only now. We till, still now know only the scalar law. I will not worry about the signs in the calculation. I will just consume them and put the formula. Is equal to in the magnitude. Capital Q2 small q divided by 4 pi epsilon d minus x. Holds. Because if x is the distance from q1, d minus x is the distance from q2 of that particular charge q. This immediately gives me what? x by d minus x. Definitely x is positive. D, is, D minus X is also positive because X cannot be greater than T is equal to X by D minus X is equal to mm, quick root Q1 by Q2. That's a number. What is x ultimately? In place, x is equal to root q1 by q2 divided by 1 plus root q1 by q2 is equal to 1 by 1 plus root q2 by q1. You agree this? Take it once. Okay, mm. what is that? D, D, D into no? D by F? Yeah. D by D into root Q1 by Q2 by 1 plus root Q1 by Q2 is D by 1 plus root Q2 by Q1, correct? Keep concentrating. Try to instantaneously correct. Next. 
just to make you feel comfortable if q1 and q2 are opposite charges dissimilar and i will take a case where it is plus q1 one charge another charge minus q2 where the magnitude of q2 is less than magnitude of q1 now i should identify a point at which any for any charge experiences no force definitely here also at each and every point any charge experiences two forces they should act along the same line for them to act along the same line they should be there on the line joining these two charges now at any position it should experience the charge force of equal magnitude from each we should keep it near q2 on the line join, joining these two charges and say because if this is x this is d because q1 is greater than q2 force is directly proportional to the charge inversely proportional to the distance squared it should be nearer to the charge of lesser magnitude in this case if this is minus q let us suppose one force because of q1 will be attractive towards q1 because of q2 it will be repulsive i want these two forces to be equal and opposite opposite is guaranteed as long as it is there on the line joining these two charges equal because of which i have to use what q1 small q by 4 pi epsilon d plus x whole squared is equal to q2 small q divided by 4 pi epsilon x squared because of which again x by d plus x is equal to root q2 by, root q2 by q1 and d is x is equal to this right fine because you are taking only the magnitude correct correct always it gives you the proper answer only we are not worried about even though one is positive charge, another is negative charge. We are not worried about their size, we just are using the magnitudes.